The first canonized saint of the Western Hemisphere was a frail young woman of staggering asceticism and profound mystical gifts. She was the daughter of a Spanish conquistador named Gaspar de Flores and his wife, Maria de Oliva. When she was born, the servant of the Flores family exclaimed that the child looked like a rose. The mother was pleased by this compliment, so even though the child was baptized as Isabel, she started calling her Rose. That is such a wonderful name. I will call you Rose. And so did everyone around her. From an early age, Rose wanted to become a nun. She often prayed and fasted in secret. She performed secret penances, some of which were painful and severe. She performed daily adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and took daily communion. It soon became apparent that Rose was no ordinary child. According to renowned English Roman Catholic priest and writer of the Lives of the Saints, Alban Butler, And from her infancy, her patience in suffering and her love of mortification were extraordinary. And whilst yet a child, she ate no fruit and fasted for three days a week, allowing herself on them only bread and water, and on other days taking only unsavory herbs and pulse. Rose grew up to become a beautiful woman, and she had admirers everywhere she went. Look at her. Do you know that I would do anything to marry her? Rose became increasingly concerned by her own physical appearance and the attention she received from potential male suitors. She was, by all accounts, a young woman of considerable beauty, but she became unsettled by the harm, temptation, and suffering that her appearance could cause in others. My beauty is causing so much distraction among others. Men look at me and they are tempted, even married men. I must do something. I know what to do. Rose cut off her hair in order to lessen her own attractiveness, despite the objections of her family. What? What did you do to your hair? Her mother was particularly distraught. She wished to see her daughter married, quite possibly as a means of securing an advantageous union with a wealthier family. She also went to great lengths to support her struggling family, carrying out domestic duties and selling flowers that she cultivated herself. Most Holy Spirit, source of unity in the blessed Trinity, through the prayers of St. Catherine, may the Church always be a sign of unity in faith and morals under the leadership of the Holy Father. The divinely chosen authority who speaks in the name of Jesus Christ, who with the Father and the Son lives and reigns forever. Amen. St. Catherine of Siena became her role model, and she wanted to pursue a religious life. When those around her ridiculed this ambition, she stood her ground. You cannot stop me from doing what I love. I'm going to the convent, and I will not change my mind. Her parents opposed her plan to take a vow of chastity. This resulted in a clash of wills because her parents wanted her to marry. The struggle with her parents lasted 10 years, during which time Rose made a perpetual vow of virginity, taking St. Catherine of Siena as her model. In 1606, her mother relented and allowed Rose to become a Dominican of the Third Order, though her parents did not permit her to live in a convent. Instead, Rose chose strict enclosure and contemplation and withdrew to the seclusion of a hut in the family garden, where she endured a life of severe austerity and asceticism. She regularly wore a crown of thorns before going to bed. She slept only a few hours a night on a bed of potsherds, self-flagellated, and experienced numerous visions, particularly of the devil. 
she also dedicated her life to others by opening a clinic offering medical services to the poor. Her complete devotion to self-denial and suffering led her to ask God for greater trials. She would frequently pray, Lord, increase my sufferings, and with them increase thy love in my heart. Though she was largely a recluse, Rose was devoted to the sick and hungry in her community and often brought them to her hut to care for them. In her prayer life, Rose suffered far more from interior pains than from the scorn of her associates. For 15 years, she endured agonizing spiritual desolation. But she was also rewarded by visions of her guardian angel, of Saint Catherine, and of the Blessed Virgin. They often visited her and conversed with her in familiar manner. They taught how to gain victory over the devils who appeared to her and tempted her to sin and favored her with many special revelations. She learned from them that she would die on St. Bartholomew's Day. Rose prayed long hours for her beloved Archbishop Terribius, himself a saint in his trials, and beseeched God for the conversion of the Peruvian Indians. She was taught how to make herbal medicines and took great delight distributing these remedies to long lines of the sick poor of Lima. It was during this time that a band of Dutch pirates invaded Lima. They started looting the city, and they didn't spare the church as well. The women, children, and religious of Lima took refuge in the churches. Rose stood by them and urged them to pray. It is said that as pirates burst into the church, they were confronted with the terrifying spectacle of a young girl ablaze with light, holding a monstrace with the Blessed Sacrament. The Dutch pirates turned away and fled to their ships. They never dared to set foot on Lima again. Rose continued her prayer penance, and good works. She underwent a new season of suffering. In spite of her prayers, ruthless Spanish landlords oppressed and exploited her beloved Indians. Stop! You cannot do this to my people! Don't you worry, dear God will look after us! Rose soon came down simultaneously with asthma and arthritis. On top of this, she began to have dreams, which caused her soul great disturbance. Her only support came from the Dominican saint, Brother Martin de Porres, who assured her that her visions and spiritual aridity were signs of the highest friendship with God. Her greatest consolation was to hear from the lips of Christ himself, Rose of my heart, be my spouse. By means of mental prayer, in which she exercised herself with the most ardent love of God, she attained to the closest and most intimate union with Him and was never out of His holy presence. Rose, like many saints, had a special relationship with nature. She also had a natural talent for singing and composed a song in praise of God. Legend has it that a small bird came each day at sunset and sang a love song with her that she had composed. The bird's song was so sweet that Rose listened to the sweet notes from morning till evening. Rose had turned 31 years old. She knew that her time on earth was about to end. On the 1st of August, she went to her room at night in perfect health. But at midnight, she was heard crying and groaning piteously. She died after a painful illness, just as a clock was striking midnight, reminiscent of the gospel parable of the bridegroom and the ten virgins bearing lamps. Though she died in 1617, at the early age of 31, Rose's love of God 
was so intense that she was recognized as a saint in her own lifetime. Many miracles and conversions attributed to her intercession soon followed her death. She was canonized by the church just 54 years later in 1671. Saint Rose of Lima has captured the imagination of the world and stands as one of the most popular saints in the history of the church. The Feast of St. Rose is celebrated on August 23rd.